And if I did that dumb thing where I put a clip at the start of the video, I'd be like, why did bricks just fall from the sky and completely destroy my vehicle? Find out why in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a map inspired by Area 51 called Silver Valley. So this is a pretty big map where things are very spaced out, so you'll see the majority of things on this map, but there might be a few things here and there that you don't get to see. Anyways, let's go ahead and start at the default location. And in this situation, it's the one next to the diner, so you can go ahead and take a look at the diner. The diner's pretty cool, and it is called the UFO Diner. Do you know why? It's not because there's a UFO off in the distance hovering about menacingly. It's actually because there's a UFO on top of the diner. And it really is a spot on map for the one that's flying around. In fact, I would say it's 100% accurate because it uses the exact same model it looks like. <laughs> so over here we have a half finished housing development, but I want to say it's abandoned. It's called Sweaty Palms. Get it? Because gamers and their sweaty hands. But there's no construction equipment around here, which is why I would assume it's half finished and abandoned. And you see, the farther you drive, the less built up the houses are. And we keep going and going, and these ones here, they don't even have a roof, so it makes it much easier to fly over them. And can my truck still drive after doing that? Oh, heck yes it can. And if we continue driving along, you'll see that the house is just getting worse and worse. It's just a foundation with a couple of walls. And eventually, there aren't even any walls here, and the only thing that remains is just the foundation. So what's going on? You know what I think it is? I think it's Area 51's secret testing. Maybe these aren't even real houses. I mean, look at this next building. It's just a foundation, and so is the next one. Why are they building just foundations? We need to explore them. Is there anything sketchy going on in this foundation? Let's find out. <laughs> That's a funny way to crash, look at that. It captured me perfectly. But I know what you are all really here for. We're gonna break into Area 51, or whatever this military base is over here. To do that, we're gonna use the off-road version of the Hirochi Sunburst. And this is probably the perfect car for breaking into Area 51, because what do we need? We need decent off-road capabilities, nothing too extreme, but we need speed. And this car has a good amount of speed. As you see, we're up to 80, almost 90 miles per hour, and here comes the break-in. We're flying into Area 51. They would never see that coming. We have officially broken in. And you know what's in here? This really interesting new futuristic device of flight. Now wait, that's just a UFO. You can't fool a YBR. I know what UFOs look like. I can even drift around UFOs. Okay, well, maybe not exactly. You know what happened there? It doesn't match up because the UFOs have secret alien technology. They have force fields to protect them for YBRs and sunbursts. That's the obvious problem here, and that's why I couldn't drift around it. So to really test this force field out, why don't we just drive straight into a UFO and see what that does. Thankfully, we have a decently fast car, so we're going to be going at least 75 miles per hour, about 80 miles per hour. Here's the slow motion, and here is the impact. Oh, well, that was interesting. It kind of just looked like when you crash into a wedge. The car just wedged into it. It didn't really look circular, and we can't drive, unfortunately, but I think... The roll cage helped a lot there in keeping the vehicle structure, so let's go ahead and bring it back. And I did peek into the other hangars around here, and as far as I could tell, there was nothing interesting in them, unless it's a secret military aircraft that's completely invisible. So the only way to know is if I drove through every hangar and tried to crash into invisible objects. And if I found one, then I'd have to crash into it from every angle possible. I overshot that corner a little bit, but I managed it. I just finessed between those trees, and we're good. So the next area I want to go to has something really, really interesting. It's some secret government technology that actually exists in real life that they don't want you to know about. But I'm gonna show it to you guys because the government can't tell me what to do. This is the gravity cannon. And we could actually read the sign on it to see what it says. We can see speed is important for successful launch, but the next part's just a little too small so we get closer and it says, if you get stuck, Hold the insert key until you are in a safe spot. Do not press home. See, when I read that, you know what that makes me want to do, right? I don't even have to say it. It makes me want to press home to see why can't I press home? You need to tell me things like this. And oh, that's not how we use a gravity cannon. That's just how we slam into a wall. So for the gravity cannon, let's get a car. It's a little bit different. How about we go with a ETK I series and we'll get the track edition so it's nice and fast for going into the cannons. So we have three different cannons. The first one 
is the one on the far right side that shoots us back the way we came. So it's just going to shoot us all the way on top of the building, in fact. So it shot us farther away than where we started. And obviously, there's no way this thing is going to drive. The engine's gone. It's missing its drive wheels. It's demolished. So now we go to gravity cannon number two in the middle. And this one is pretty easy. It just shoots us forward at a high rate of speed. And we can fly into the mountain. You see there is a road over here. We'll be checking that road out later on. But for now, we're just going to wreck into the bushes. And again, we can't drive because the engine is broken. It's basically just falling off the vehicle. So for the final gravity cannon, this one's actually the most extreme. It's very simple, too. It just shoots us straight into the air. But look at how high it shoots us into the air. We are at the height of the UFO. In fact, at this point, we are a UFO. You can see the whole map from here, too, which is a really great way to take a view of everything. But now we have just crushed the car to the ground. And, of course, after something like that, there's no way this thing is going to be able to drive. But here's a quick look at the damage before we go ahead and reset it. So why don't we go ahead and see where the road that leads up the mountain actually goes. And to do that, we need a car that's good at climbing mountain roads. So we're going to go with the rally version of the Hirochi Sunburst. And this should work perfect for that because the roads aren't that off-roady. In fact, we can do it with just about any vehicle there is. But it's nice to have a car that's a little bit overpowered for things like this. So is the car going to hold up? Well, rear drive shaft is broken, but what about the front? Oh, yeah, we can do basically nothing. So we'll reset it. And instead of following the road directly, we will take some shortcuts because this is a pretty long road that's very easy to take shortcuts through. So just like this, I know the road curves back around up here, so we just take a straight path and then boom, we are up here. But I will give you an idea of what it's like to actually drive on the road as well. So here we are doing real rally racing with my Hirochi Sunburst. Look at me as I go at just average speeds. I don't know the road that good to really be powering through here. I know it just enough to know the shortcuts. That's the important bit. But you can see, it's a pretty easy road, and I think we could get through this with just even a regular stock, basic Pessima with nothing fancy on it, just a normal economy car, and it would probably be fine, or a Bolide would be fine. But here's the good stuff, cutting right through, saving tons of time look at this boom more roads saved and we're gonna do one final cut and this is the biggest cut of all we are gonna go directly to the destination so we go until we see no more bushes once we get to that point which is right here we go towards the right and if we go straight to the right we should meet the road up where it ends and we get to see what is at the end of this really long road which i navigated in a really short amount of time well we have a secret cave and what is in this secret cave we are gonna find out by driving right on into it or not oh come on how can't you fit it looks like it'd be the perfect size, but we just don't have the ground clearance, I guess. So we're just going to punt the car in there with some force. I was trying to keep it safe before. Not this time. <laughs> we made it in successfully-ish. Like, our car is in there, but we can't drive it all. But we can see what's inside, so that's what's important. So, yeah, there's another UFO in here. How did they get the UFO in there? Well, that's truly a good question, because I don't know. It doesn't look like it would fit through the doorway, does it? So why is there a UFO here? I think it's the extra secret UFO, so secret it can't even be stored in a fake Area 51. Why do I think that? Because look at these tarps. They look very suspiciously like something that'd be military grade. Although I know absolutely nothing about that, but I do know a lot about jumping off of mountains. You do it like so. See? That's all there is to know. Now you know a lot. I got no steering, but I could put down the world's tiniest amount of power. With the downhill's help? We can actually get moving a little bit surprisingly. I am trying to go to the right, mind you, but it does absolutely nothing. I don't even know why I'm holding it down at this point. Hey, I went to the right. Oh, yeah, downhill time. This is working amazingly well. We're probably going to make it down the mountain faster than we can climb it, even though we have no wheels in the front of my car. Uh-oh, this is no longer working amazingly well. It's working okay, though, because we're still moving. Nope, rear drive shaft broken. And this car is completely done. There is nothing I can do to influence the direction it goes. Both of the front wheels are gone. The rear drive shaft is broken. I guess if I wanted to, I could hit the brakes. But all that would do would slow me down. I don't want to slow down. I want to see if we can make it all the way. There goes a wheel zooming by. Dang, wheel, you fast. Where's the other wheel at? I don't know, but I'm going to beat him, and I'm actually going to make it all the way here. Amazing. 
we can actually just pop back in here. And you notice how that car is completely wrecked and you don't remember me leaving it as a wreck? Well, that is one funny thing about the gravity cannons, right? So you can go into any one of these gravity cannons and not only does it shoot your car, it shoots the other car too. And they just get shot straight up in the air no matter what. So I think on the one that shoots me forward, it does just shoot you straight in the air, but it has an angle to it, so it shoots you forward as well. So we get another great view of everything, and then splat car destroyed you know what i have a dumb idea if it does it on cars does it do it on props too can we just put a concrete retaining wall and shoot it into space i gotta see this so we're just gonna drive him forward let him just coast and watch the wall yep <laughs> what kind of area 51 technology is this i don't know but it's crazy oh what we gotta do is we gotta put a car below this and watch a car just get obliterated by that. That's going to be great. All right, so car, your job is just to get obliterated by the wall. I got to remember about where it is. So we activate it, reset, and then the wall. Oh, if you reset the car, it resets the height too. Interesting. So we need a third car. All right, which car is good at getting crushed? How about we use a nice, big, fat roamer? We'll get the street two in one because it's a cool paint job. And then we need to go back to the sunburst. Well, first we need to reset the wall. And then I'm going to get the sunburst moving towards the gravity cannon. But I'm going to go back to the roamer. And I'm going to line him up with the bricks. So it's nice and easy to place him. Because i got to know exactly where the bricks are going to land to make sure it gets crushed properly. So I'm just going to save this spot right here. And then we're going to go back to the sunburst. Drive him into the gravity cannon. Everybody goes for a nice little flight. I reset the roamer. And we just back him up a little bit. And the bricks should fall on top of me. That is, of course, assuming they go straight up in the air and fall straight down as well, which I think they'll do. The hard part is knowing when they'll land. And if I did that dumb thing where I put a clip at the start of the video, I'd be like, why did bricks just fall from the sky and completely destroy my vehicle? Find out why in this video. Oh, we definitely got to do that again. But this time we're going to add some slow motion because it happened so fast the vehicle just exploded, basically. <laughs> I like that we can see everything flying in the air off in the distance. We can't watch this for a second because we don't need to get the Roman position immediately, but now we probably need to. And the bricks should be coming down at any moment. There they are, and there's a UFO just flying by. He's taking a cruise as I'm chucking bricks into the air. He's lucky he don't get hit. So let's go ahead and get a nice camera angle so we could really admire the bricks. Camera, what are you doing? And here we go. Lots of slow-mo and like butter. That's why I picked a yellow SUV to simulate a knife going through butter because that car stood no chance at all just complete destruction and even a little bit of glitchiness into the mix so where's the other car at yep he's also completely destroyed so i'll reset everybody and then we'll continue on to the next area we're going to be taking a look at and there's one small addition that i made to the area that's coming up and we're going to see if you can figure out what is the part that i added so over here there's a lot of trucks and we can fly over the trucks thanks to my addition i put a ramp there just because i don't know what else to do when you give me a bunch of trucks in a row like this except do a monster truck impersonation and fly over all of them just barely that was beautiful although we can't come to a stop in time and we're gonna crash it was beautiful until we crashed into the wall and can we drive a little bit but it's very very slow and since it's gonna go so slow let's go ahead and swap out cars and we'll go with something a little different. How about we do an Ibishu Corvette and we'll get a faster stock version like the 1.5 ZXI Special. And now we must escape from the military base because they know somebody's been using their gravity cannon. Somebody's been jumping over their trucks. What happens if I don't escape? Absolutely nothing. There's no actual threat here, but it's fun to add a little bit of story into the videos, you know? So we're doing our very best to get out of here as fast as we possibly can. And really the only way out of here is through the door, which opens and closes at random. We fit, kind of. The good news is, is no matter how open the door is, you can actually go through it. You can go through the solid object looking door, but it's just kind of fun to like try to shoot through there before it closes. In that situation though, I would have definitely been just a little bit too late. So I'm gonna keep driving the ZXI a little bit more until we get to the paved road. And once we get there, we'll switch to a car that's more appropriate. And there it is right up here. So what's a good car for a paved road? Well, I'm going to just go with the average daily driver that has enough power to merge onto the freeway. Something like the drag version of the Burnside Special. Because we have a nice straight road here where we can really make use of its power. So here we go, already up to 100 miles per hour. We're going to keep going until the road runs out. And eventually, it will. 
The question is, will I crash when the road runs out? Let's find out. No, we will not. We will make it over the barriers. That is amazing. But there's nothing out here except for mountains forever. So we need to go back to where the interesting things are. So we got to come to a stop, do a 180. And this thing is not driving good, but it's driving good enough. My goal now is to get home because there is a house which I'm gonna claim as the YBR house now. This is officially where I live in this map, and I'm gonna make a spawn point on the map called YBR's house, if I knew how to add spawn points to the map. Unfortunately, I don't. I'm sure it's probably really, really easy and I can figure it out in a few minutes, but we can't do that right now because we're busy making a video for the map. The good news is though, we can see my house. I'm a smoking fireball at this point, barely able to drive, but we have made it into the garage. That is a huge success and rear drive shaft is broken from that. You can tell it was close to breaking already. So here is a look at the damage, which is kind of hard to see because we have to go inside the garage. But now we can go ahead and get a new vehicle. So how about we go with an ETK K series and we'll get the police edition, which doesn't make sense here, but whatever. You know what, if it has to make sense, I'll give it a little bit of a story. So this is the secret Area 51 vehicle they use to transport people around. It confuses the average American when they see Polizia on the rear of the vehicle and they figured out they don't know what the vehicle is doing so they just completely ignore it. Yep, there we go. We gave it a story and now we have an excuse to drive around a European police car all up in Area 51 which would obviously be in America. I'm sorry, it's not actually Area 51, it's just inspired by Area 51, but you can't stop me from calling it Area 51, I'm gonna call it that all day. And over to our left we have something pretty interesting coming up. This is the very first car wash I have ever seen in BMG Drive that you can actually drive through. So what happens when you drive through it? Well, nothing happens. It looks cool, but absolutely nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because there's no dirt in the game yet. If they added dirt to the game, then I could wash it off in the car wash. But it's fun to mess around with it. Yep, just boop, I got a clean police car now. So what do you do with a clean police car? That, <laughs> that completely destroyed it. All right, let's go ahead and grab a different car then. How about we go with an Obishu Hopper and do some off-roading? So we'll get something a little off-roady, but nothing crazy. So how about we do the sports special? And now we're gonna try to find our way onto another military base. This one does not have hangars for planes, but it does have some other buildings that we could go ahead and take a peek at. We just gotta make sure we find our way there. And we could easily get there by just following the dirt roads, or we could do what I'm doing now and just trying to wing it and hopefully we get in the right general area and that works because there's the entrance right there. I lined up perfectly with where I thought it was. So here we have a little guard area where you might have somebody there to try to stop you, but apparently they're on break. So I can drive right on into here at way too fast to speed. We're slowing this down just a little bit because we got a tight corner. So you have a building here with a US flag on it. And then if we go to the back of this building, we have something that looks like it would be really cool. A ramp to get into a truck, except it doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't have collisions. But we do have a kind of fun sign to read at the world's most awkward angle. It says US Air Force Base. Authorized personnel only, use of deadly force is permitted beyond this point, no trespassing. And then closer you see, clap alien cheeks. Yep, that's literally what it says. Also, if you wanted to just teleport the vehicle onto the back of the truck, you could do that, except it just kind of floats there. You know why? Aliens. This is an alien truck with alien technology that makes you float. That's the obvious solution to this problem. Why did I flip over? Also, the aliens. It's all the aliens' fault because I have never crashed in BMG Drive before in my life. But now we're switching vehicles again. We're going to go with the D35 Beast in a nice bright yellow color. And now we're going to do a little bit of exploring and off-roading to find what I would consider the big Easter egg in the map. And coming from this direction is probably the easiest way to find it. So what we do is we exit the military base, go in as fast as we possibly can through a tiny gap with a big truck. Ooh, that was a clean fit. And then we go over to the left. And if we just head in this general area, we should find what I'm looking for. I'm not gonna spoil it just in case I can't find it. If I can't find it, well, we don't get to see it. Looking around and I think I see just the edge of it. So I think we're on the right path and there it is. This is where the aliens landed their ship. 
Although they're not very good at landing it. Then again, I'm not very good at driving my truck because I just broke both the front and rear drive shafts by looking at an alien spaceship. So now what I want to do is drive onto the alien ship. So we need big off-road capabilities in the crawler. And now you can't stop me from growing right on top of an alien ship. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, kind of. I know what happened though. The aliens have their force fields on that caused me to tip over. It's those dang aliens again messing up my driving. Look, we're floating because they got their alien force field, which I did not expect. And I don't have a counter for that because I only have regular human technology. So we'll make our way out of here. And we're going to go take a look at one final area. And I would consider this area kind of another Easter egg area. Because if you look at the map where it lists all of the different locations you could spawn at, this is not listed as one of the options, even though... It's a fully fleshed out area that it seems like, yeah, you can go and drive to if you want to. Again, there is an actual dirt path we could drive to to get here, but this is the faster way from the direction I was coming from. And we have a great vehicle for this because it can take those kinds of jumps and keep on going and don't you tip on me. There we go. We found the road. What are we going to do when we see the road? We'll drive on it for a little bit, but it's still a long way to go to the actual destination. We really can't even see it quite yet. So we're probably gonna do a lot more shortcuts as well just to save time. Like we could probably go, whoa, don't you tip on me. See you trying to tip. What I was gonna say though is we could probably go and just cut through another large chunk of road once we see the destination. And I think we should be able to just barely make it out way at the top of some mountains, almost straight ahead. So we are gonna just go straight ahead basically to try to get in that area. So if you look at the top right corner of the screen, you can see there's a little bit of a building in the mountainside. That is where we're trying to head to. And the road just crisscrosses all over the place to get there. So I'm just doing my best to get into its general direction. We will try to get back onto the road eventually, but right now we have big off-road capable vehicle. We are gonna use it and try to save as much time as we possibly can. Here we go, here's a good spot to do a little jump maybe. Right back onto the road, whoop, yes. Although now I don't know exactly which direction to go. This is a pretty big mountain, but we're gonna try to climb it anyways. I just gotta make sure I don't give it too much gas and accidentally tip over. Come on, climb it, yes. This is the power of locked differentials and four wheel drive and a bad driver. And oh no, this is not the right way. Let's go back to the road. This is a mistake. I'm starting to fall apart. I saw something fall off of my vehicle. To the road, to the road. Okay, ooh, calm down. And we are getting closer. I know, it's a long drive. It is a very long drive to get here. That's why I almost considered it an Easter egg, because it's really just buried in the corner of the map, and there's no quick way to get here. You have to just drive or be lazy and teleport. Now, that mountain looks too steep to try to climb. I could try. Definitely, I could try. But I am 99% certain that I would just fail, and then we would have to try again just driving up the normal road. So, why waste the time? And by the way, I should mention... There is some payoff to this. We're not just driving up to the very top of this just to look at the building. There's also a very, very big jump. By now, you can probably make out what the building actually is. So if you can't tell by now, it looks like it'd be some sort of observatory building where they have like a telescope in it. So what are they using it for? Maybe they're looking at aliens or maybe it's an individual who's spying on Area 51. Nobody knows. It's a complete mystery. So now for the part everybody has been waiting for. The big jump is just a little bit more down this road and then we will take a look at it. Although before we do that, I think we should get a car. That's a little bit better at flying through the air. So goodbye, Hopper. Well, that really didn't do that much damage. I probably could have done a lot more damage if I dropped it down the hill, but then I would have to bring it back up, so that's fine. So let's go with the 390 GTR version of the Bolide. And then we just gotta get our way to the jump, which is literally just a few feet behind us. We gotta do a 180, so we're pointed in the right direction. That looked pretty clean. So here is the jump. We're gonna go ahead and save the spot, just in case I wanna do it with another vehicle. And then full speed ahead while trying to maintain speed. It is a little bit bumpy, so this is not the ideal vehicle for this, but I think we can maintain enough control to make it to the bottom and hit the jump and go for a flight. Doing pretty good, over 100 miles per hour, sliding around a little bit, but we got it. And we got a nice roll in the air. Should we make a good crash landing? Yes. Beautiful spiral, beautiful landing. That was great. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how many UFOs I find on the map. So do the right thing 
and I'll see you next time.